Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past. Second best X Men movie, in my opinion. I think Logan takes the number one spot, but this one is really good. Clear number two. Yeah. yeah. This was my favorite until Logan came out. Yep, same here. Um, the, the premise is the world is falling when you, apart. When did you watch this? When? Just the other day. Okay. It's been, it's probably been like two weeks now for me. Okay. No, yeah, I watched it yesterday, the day before that. Something like that. I don't, I don't remember exactly. But uh, yeah, no, it it is fantastic. The everything I think everything with the Sentinels is the action is the best out of any of the movies, uh-huh. even better than Logan. I think Logan has the best story, but I think this has the best action. Where okay. you see all the X Men fighting the Sentinels, using each other's powers to work together to try to stop them, just to you know try to stall them. Like they the Sentinels are so overpowered. That there's nothing that the X Men can do other than slow them down in hopes to go back in time and reset. You know, like yeah, it was that that as a I don't know if I would say it's a villain, but um, as the uh, opposition or the threat, I thought it was great. I really yeah. I thought they did a really good job with that, and I thought they did a really good job at showing why the Sentinels were so dangerous because. With being able to take each other or take their powers and you know manipulate all that is like oh this is they don't stand a chance like it makes no. complete sense um yeah one, no, it was rough <laughs> one of the things i was a little confused about with the sentinels though is where is the rest of humanity i know all at, the at that point in the future yeah i know all the mutants are being destroyed and you know being chased chased out but humans shouldn't be targeted by the sentinels so are they still around or as the sentinels just taken over everything and it's basically skynet like i was a little fuzzy on that mm, yeah they're not really clear on that either like i don't um, i don't know if there's like a perfect little community for humans and then on the outside of it the mutants are just being you know slaughtered left and right because the right. world they were in in the current time or the future time whatever you consider it is just a hellscape you know like this is on fire yeah and so i was like oh where what happened to everyone else though you know uh, yeah i didn't uh, i didn't even think about that hmm. but yeah, yeah. So, um go ahead. Go ahead. no go ahead that's all i got so that's it it's yeah and then we're done <laughs> thanks for listening everybody um which which version did you watch because i watched the road cut this time oh i think i just watched the standard one yeah um the road cut i completely get why that wasn't the theatrical cut it seemed very unnecessary oh really what was different about it i think there's like an extra 15 minutes of Mm -hmm. movie and so when kitty pride gets stabbed by Logan. They start panicking and are like, we need to find Rogue, who's being held inside of Cerebro. Cerebro. Mm-hmm. Um, and get her to come take Kitty Pride's powers and then do it. Use her powers on Logan because Kitty Pride is too weak. Yeah. I think in the original cut, she just kind of overcomes being stabbed, right? Um. Yeah, I don't know. She gets, I don't remember. Yeah, they, I, it felt kind of like a weak point when I first saw the movie, but it seemed worse with Rogue in it. <laughs> watching it the second time. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Rogue shows up and takes the power from Kitty Pride, and then continues. wait, 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 are you saying that Rogue is not in the original cut? Uh she's not. Uh she's not captured. I don't believe. Oh, then maybe I did watch the road cut. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think she is. I I wouldn't know. I don't know. Now I'm confused. Yeah, I couldn't tell up. you how it was in the theaters. Yeah. So. I don't think she was in the theatrical, but I don't know confidently enough to talk about it. <laughs> oh, well, then I watched the real one. Yeah. Because they went 
they went and saved her and brought her and then she does the powers for Kitty Pride. And I believe in the theatrical cut, Kitty Pride is the only one who ever does the powers. Um, hmm. Okay. I don't remember. But in this version, in the road cut that I watched, he takes the powers and I thought it would have been it might have been implied, but I don't feel like it really was that Rogue kills Kitty Pride um, by taking the powers. I thought that would have been an interesting change. for them mm. to be so desperate to change things that they're like, the only thing we can do is you have to die now. And, you know, because yeah. there's like some self sacrifices, like with Magneto and stuff like that, where he like right. is about to die. But if Rogue came in and just murdered Kitty Pride to take her powers, I thought that would have been a like, powerful moment. But they, they didn't right. really do that. Um, yeah, so what do you think about all the in the past stuff? or in the current? I, It's weird, because this is the follow-up, the sequel, The First Class. Mm-hmm. Um, and First Class takes place in the 70s. This takes place in the 80s. But what is the current timeline? Is the current timeline in the past or in the future for this movie? Oh, yeah. Um, for the trilogy, it would be in the past. Yeah. But for the movie, the way they establish the movie, I would say it's the future. And they, he goes back in time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what's the other alternative? That it's... Um, a vision of the future and not the current timeline. That the current timeline is being affected by the future, not the future is being saved by the past. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay. Kind of. I see. Doesn't really matter, but right. It, I no, I understand. Like, is um, it the I, current I, timeline and the future, or is it the current timeline in the past? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. What do you think about the past stuff? Oh, I love all of that stuff. I thought it was great. Um. I was a little confused by. I felt like they probably didn't need to add Striker. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Even though I really like, I've gone on on the record saying I like Striker as a villain. Uh, it felt weird. It didn't. It, it felt like it didn't line up with who he is as a character. Yeah. Well, I didn't get. I didn't get the ending where Striker's eyes flash the color because it's Mystique. Mm-hmm. But I didn't understand what that was trying to say. Like, Mystique is the reason why Logan got the claws, but not. I thought Mystique saved Logan, but didn't. Yeah, I thought that's what it was. But he still goes and goes through everything. But we don't know that. I thought that changed because of what happened in this movie. Um, right, because we've talked about that before, and I didn't remember it the first time you said that she essentially saved him from the Weapon X program. That's what I took it as, but in the next movie, he is in the Weapon X program. The in Apocalypse. Apocalypse? Okay, so m- maybe she is the reason. It's the other way around. She is the reason he does it? No, I don't know. Because, well, so the problem is... I need is, to see Apocalypse. That's the problem. Oh, you've never seen Apocalypse? No, I've seen it. It's just been a long time. Um, yeah, so... Gene Gray, Sophie Turner, like, Mm -hmm. finds Logan and calms his mind and frees him. And he runs out in the shorts with the headgear on and takes off running into the wilderness. Oh, that's right. That's what you were talking about. Okay. Um, But in this... So before... Okay. This is the problem talking about time travel stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, This is why we can't have it. Without Days of Future Past, Logan gets captured by Striker. No. Without Days of Future Past, Logan gets um goes into the military and with Sabretooth, Striker comes and recruits them, and then yep. Sabretooth or Striker tricks Logan into getting the adamantium so he could fight Sabretooth. Right? That's the in the the canonical version of of the X Men movies, that's what happens. Yeah. But now, instead, Mystique takes Logan against his will and does it to him. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's it, just throw it in the list of the the continuity issues with the X Men franchise. Yeah, there's a lot. It's like they they're they're so disconnected, but they try in each movie to to connect it to the past in some aspect that it makes it like we can't figure out if you are doing this as a separate trilogy or if you want it to be part of the whole established universe. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. I don't really know what they're cause at the end of this, which I thought was cool was they undo everything X-Men three did with killing yeah. Jean gray with Cyclops. Everything. Well, Cyclops died at the end of two, right? Uh, yes. Um, so they undo all that. Everyone's back alive. Everyone's happy. Logan is teaching at the school. Um, all no. that's done. Un- yeah, I think he did. You're right. Yeah, because Professor X is like, you're late for your class or whatever. You got to go teach. Um, Wait, when did Jean Grey die then? Jean Grey died at the end of three. Yeah, but she died a, a, a time before that because... Cyclops was out looking for her. Maybe and he she. Heard her voice. That's right. She died. She died at the end of two. She. He died at the beginning of three. Yes. Yeah. That's right. She okay. dies at the end of two. She, or she like gets yeah. evaporated. Or no, she. She holds off the water, the hurricane, something. Yeah. Like, she helps lift the plane off. She's down there and gets destroyed by the water. Ground. Ground. Um. Then she comes back, she reconstitutes her body and meets up with Cyclops, kills Cyclops. And then yeah. Logan kills her because he loves Cyclops. She also kills Professor X. Yeah. Who ends up I heard he he takes over his twin brother's body. And that's what was going on at the end of that. Yeah, uh, I didn't it's, know he had a twin brother. I didn't either. It's all weird, man. X-Men is too hard to keep up with. It is in a lot of ways and, and not necessarily the movies, but like with all the stuff that goes down, all the yeah. ridiculous stuff and all the characters that goes down in like comic books, it's like a soap opera. Yeah. Well, that's basically what it is with people dying, coming back and the, how extreme storylines are and then how they just don't matter later on. It's like, mm-hmm. it's very, um, focused on what's going on right now it doesn't care about the past i know a lot of a lot of soap operas like to integrate the or not integrate but use the whole oh it was this guy's twin yeah (laughs) that's why this happened and that's who this is stuff like that it's the best oh yeah you you thought he died well he did die but this is his twin who looks the same so where he's the new character he just he does everything exactly the same it's it's like like beer fest yeah (laughs) Except that was done well. But, well, yeah, that was perfect. Yeah. That's how it should be done. Uh, Quicksilver. This is... Love, love Quicksilver. Uh, this scene is amazing. This is one of the best parts of the whole movie. The, the Pentagon scene? Yeah, where he's slowing down yeah. time. Like, uh, Evan Peters in this movie is... I really enjoy him. But uh, yeah. every scene that he's in, it seemed, like, he just plays the character so well. And you, like, totally get it that he would be like this. Where he's just kind of arrogant and jerk, you know, like he just does whatever and doesn't care about how people respond. Even, even when he's like, they ask him, like, "You're okay, just letting people see your powers?" He's like, "What powers? You can't prove anything, you know." Just like yeah. the whole, like, "What are you gonna do? What, yeah, you can't stop me. You can't prove that it happened. Like what?" Yeah. Um, I thought that was all great in the Pentagon scene with uh, when he puts on the headphones. The mm-hmm. only thing I don't understand about this is how is he listening to music in in real time? In real time, when he's slowing bullets down to the point where he can just move them around. Yeah, it would have been like the whole slow, deep. Yeah. Well, no, I guess technically, he. Uh, no, the music yeah. should be slowed way down. Oh yeah, that's what I mean. That like the real deep sounding slow-mo music i think even worse than that i think it you wouldn't be even able to like understand it yeah well because look how slow the Maybe bullets are going to everything on super fast forward yeah, so that, when he does go fast it 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 makes up for it yeah but 
at the same time. Like, I get that logic. But the machine that he was listening to was a, a set plan. It would have to be moving so fast (laughs) that it would just burn it up you know what i mean like it would just combust um but yeah no so like that part it doesn't matter it's not bad and i get it but i always thought that was a little goofy that he could hear music just normally without an issue i like when he was going to uh take uh magneto and 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 go and he has to like hold his hand behind his neck yeah yeah what are you doing like how do you think you fix you want whiplash or something like that <laughs> yeah like uh, do you think he how do you think he figured that out oh uh, yeah he probably killed a couple people snap some necks straight yeah. back <laughs> uh james like flop. james mcavoy again is great in this i thought oh, of he, course him being i thought the change from him being um i don't, I don't know what the word is a dirt bag i guess Optimistic? oh yeah to him being becoming Professor X again, like I thought that was too quick. Even though he talked to himself, um, it still felt like unearned almost the change, the shift. But I yeah. thought I thought he did he does really good at both. I just don't feel like it bridged super well. Okay. Um, but James McAvoy is a fantastic actor. Like yeah. I'm the only reason why I'm excited for Glass is because he's in it. Like I, I can't wait for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's I mean, if there's anything that makes me want to watch it, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Not M Night, not Bruce Willis, not Emmanuel Jackson. All three of those guys. A bit much, but James McAvoy is so good. Yeah, and, I mean, and Split was amazing. Yeah. Or he was amazing, at least. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, this is a really enjoyable movie. I liked, I really liked uh, the end um, when Magneto picks up the whole stadium yeah. and drops it down around the, because uh, you don't fully really, I guess maybe you did, I don't know, you don't fully realize what he's doing, as, and then you realize, oh, there, no one can get to him. They're yeah. like completely isolated. Yeah, well, like think about how effective that would be. Like, oh yeah, you would never ever get through there because you would. If you say you just took over the White House or the Pentagon, where was he at? The Pentagon? Uh-huh. No, that was the White House, right? Yeah. No, this was the White House. Yeah. You, yeah. Right. Um, you took over the White House. There'd be so many ways and so many options for the police, the FBI, whoever, the SWAT team, the Secret Service, that they would know yeah. certain ways to get in, certain. They would have so much um, information working against you the hostage taker you taylor specifically mm-hmm. who wants to take over Me the white house uh they would have so much information <laughs> um, they would have you know they would have such a, a an advantage because they would know everything about that place right but with him dropping the stadium around it is like he just took away that completely there's no yeah. getting through that you'd have to you know Maybe some of the tunnels would still exist, but probably not. You'd have oh, to. Probably, I'm sure they'd all be smashed. Yeah, you'd have to cut through. You know, however or just many go feet. over the top if you could. Yeah, but it's just like I thought that was a, such a cool idea and a really good moment. And the CGI looks really good too. Like it yeah. doesn't. Like I know we we talk about it a lot, and it's probably annoying or whatever, but. The, the CGI needs to not be the the showcase the of the point. yeah of the scene, and mm-hmm. I felt like Magneto was that. You know, you see oh, him sure. lifting it up, but he is the the point of the scene, and you see just the stadium behind him rising up. And I just I don't know, it's it's great. What do you think about him taking apart the the railroad and breaking them all, all that metal up into the? The little things so he could take over the sentinels oh yeah yeah yeah. no i thought that was cool i thought i thought it was cool that he couldn't so in the newer version of the sentinels he didn't have any control over them right they didn't have any type of metal or anything that he can manipulate right but in the old one he was able to do it with with the railroad track right that is it i'm trying to remember were they 
were the, uh, they didn't they have any metal originally they weren't metal but he added no, metal they were, to them he added metal to yeah. them for that because of that reason gotcha yeah no i thought um, i thought that was really interesting the the only thing is how strong do you think you have to be to pull apart like steel rail like that would still be a hundred times harder than moving a satellite or you know controlling a, a submarine underwater yeah like like at, at uh, i don't know <laughs> are you able to get to the the point where you're so like powerful that like physical metal barriers aren't like an issue like things like that yeah like, I, I don't i don't know that there's even a machine that could just take a rail like that and 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 pull it apart you know yeah yeah like like not long ways obviously you could snap it over but like the way that it broke apart like how he did that's just like immense strength i don't know yeah his powers have always kind of confused me because there doesn't seem to be like a clear defined rule it's just mm -hmm. like he can kind of do whatever he wants as long as it has to do with the metal it's kind of open to yeah. whatever yeah and which doesn't i don't don't really get because my understanding is he can manipulate the magnetic force around an object right so basically he can push or pull something and that seems like that should be it yeah so i i always thought up until the last time we talked about it uh -huh. he could just manipulate metal yeah and then you brought up the whole change the magnetic magnetic thing this and that and i mean yeah i could see it going like that way too but i I'm trying to remember. I feel like there was a scene in this movie where he like propelled towards something, and he didn't have metal or anything on him. He like it seemed like he was using some kind of magnetic force to move his body. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I remember. don't remember exactly. No, what scene that is. I felt like he he. I, I don't remember exactly. He like propelled himself somehow towards yeah. metal. What do you think about the line when he told Wolverine, "He's like nice claws. Imagine if there was metal on." Uh, eh, but whatever. I'm sure you hated it. <laughs> yeah, I I thought that was dumb. Like, maybe it makes sense. Maybe that would be something Magneto would say. But when you add in knowing the future of like him actually having metal on his claws, it kind of I don't know. Like Magneto, Magneto's whole thing is like acceptance of your mutant ability. So why would he be like? Oh, you should change that. Or like, yeah, that's it, true. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would be better if you had metal on it. And it's just like it almost, it almost felt like it was, you know, the typical thing that hit the, the fan service, right? Well, that's what it was. But, 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 but to as if like there's anyone who, it's it's so dumb because it's like, yeah, X Men is based around Wolverine and his metal claws. Like, we don't need fan service to remind us that. Remember Wolverine with metal claws? That's coming. That's really cool. <laughs> like oh if you read the comics you'll know that in the future he's going to get metal claws no well, we all know it's it's to me it's, it's well uh, established to me it's at, on the same level of him of cyclops saying oh do you want it yellow and black spandex oh no i feel like it's different really because like to me it's i feel like thing. you could watch if you didn't read a single comic and you watched and and you heard that line mm. would you necessarily know what he was referring to i think everyone knows though even if you never the, read a comic the, if you're watching the, the x-men movie and you hear yellow spandex i think you get i like wolverine is such an iconic character i think everyone would track that that's a reference to the comics you don't think so Maybe, but I don't, not on the same level as Wolverine having metal claws. Yeah, no, like that's, that's his whole identity. Yeah, but like the like the reasoning, but by putting it in is the same. Is my point. Like I could go ask my son, tell me one thing about Wolverine. Right, he'll probably say claws. He likes to smoke he, cigars. I'd be like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, do you know what costume he wears? Probably not. Yeah, no, that's fair. Because he's not a comic reader, and it's not like they do that in the movie. So, but it it is part of that fan service yeah. package. Yeah, that, just it's bad, right? I think you're finally starting to see. 
You no, know it, it's it can be bad. I don't. Yeah. My I friend. Don't, at this point, I don't even remember at what point I said I there was like one that I liked. <laughs> My friend Aaron uh, from the Fire Resistant podcast. He he's been listening, and he he got really upset with you um, oh, no. for saying that X Men Three is better than X Men Two. And uh, he was actually oh, no, yelling at you over on Discord about it. But uh, oh, really? he was saying that we need to change our theme song because. You agree with me now on everything. We don't disagree anymore like we used to, because all my yeah, points are so strong that I've now because you've just worn me down. <laughs> Every time, right before I I start this podcast, I'm like, all right, I, I can't do this. <laughs> like, just agree, just let him say whatever he wants. Oh man! If you if you have a counterpoint, he's just gonna make fun of you again. <laughs> oh, I hope that's true. I'd be I'd be sorry if you were just like. If I was just time. broken. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um Nicholas Holt. I again as the beast. I think he did another pretty good job. I th- I like him more than Kelsey Grammer. Yeah, for sure. But I think you I think you said it. Uh, Nicholas Holt is a better scientist and Kelsey Grammer is a better politician. Politi- yeah, for sure. Which I think is true. Um I I don't get him and Mystique's love story. That feels kind of forced to me. Well, because they're they're both blue. Yeah, that's it. Um, I don't. It it doesn't seem necessary for any any of these movies. Do no, you think it adds having the love story? It adds nothing. Yeah, I, I think at, at least with comics, um, I think the format kind of transcend transcends the need for a love story. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of stories need it. It's almost like required for it to be yeah. engaging. But I think with comics that the 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 desire to be accepted is your mutation or your abilities, and it doesn't need to have that desire. To I feel be like interpersonal with another, <sighs> like in a relationship. I feel you like know? that's true in in probably most of them. I definitely like in the X Men universe. I feel like I, I feel like it, it plays a big role in like the the Spider Man universe having his his love interest. I think that's a, a lot bigger part of his his whole character. Yeah, um, maybe. But he's also not a mutant. He doesn't have that need to fit in. He it's not his thing. Yeah. Uh, well, it is though. I mean, Spider Man. I think the difference with Spider Man is Spider Man and Peter Parker and Batman and Bruce Wayne and. Um, uh, Clark Kent and Superman are all very oh. divided, and so when he yeah. is Spider Man or Batman or Superman, they get to be two different people and yeah. mutants don't. Yeah, so their opposition as their superhero is the villain, right? Their or society or acceptance of the public. Whereas Peter Parker, Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent, they kind of need that. Um, love story aspect that relationship aspect the drive uh the drama to have conflict there yeah but with x-men because you know logan is wolverine is logan all the time you don't really need a love story to continue that and with uh beast and mystique it just is almost a distraction from the main story yeah no for sure um all in all though it's uh, it's a great movie yeah no i think it's it's one of the better superhero movies overall it's probably Um, in my top five of all superhero movies but oh it's definitely in the top five that list is getting more and more difficult to keep at five like movies are falling off of your list well like with infinity war with winter soldier with um you know iron man one out oh, so you've seen it it's getting populated well yeah it's difficult to narrow it down to just the top five like i gotcha to have like a, before it was easy to be like oh these are clearly in my top five and even number five is may not be that great okay so in, in no particular order what would you say your five favorite ex or superhero movies are my favorite x-men movies um logan Super- logan is Super- up there. Yeah, yeah no i gotcha uh, Logan okay. is up there. I think Infinity War 
yeah. I, I have a weird thing about Infinity War still where it's kind of dependent on in game. Like in game and Infinity War is gonna be one thing in Oh yeah, for it will. Because the stakes in Infinity War don't mean anything without in game. Yeah. But Infinity War standalone as a movie itself is fantastic. The Thanos story, everything, like it's so good. But as a series and a franchise, it is kind of pointless. You know what I mean? Like yeah. as its own thing, it's great. In the series, it's kind of a filler. Which, you know, like so it's a weird a weird way to um enjoy it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Like I, I really like it and I also really don't like it at the same time. Um, but I, I would say Infinity Wars in there, um, The Dark Knight is in there, uh, Iron Man One is probably in there, Spider Man One is up there. Like those two are not like quite Homecoming as good. Spider-Man? What's up? Are you talking about Homecoming Spider Man? No, no, with Tobey Maguire, the first one. Oh, okay. but that's I didn't think that'd be in the top five. Well, it's up there because of nostalgia. It's not like that great of a movie but it was like so important to me as a kid similar to like terminator 2 like yeah. when first time i saw it i was like wow this is amazing um but it's not i don't know like winter soldier those are all it's getting more into the top 10 list now <laughs> but uh no I, I think this is definitely around the area i i go back and forth based on how i feel in the moment too you know like if I'm in the mood for more of a yeah. serious thing or more action, or you know, like I don't have like a definite. This is always my number one of anything. I'm so, I'm I'm a little ashamed and and surprised you didn't throw Blank Man in there. Blank Man is always number one. I meant to. Yeah. If I had to pick five, obviously, Spider Man Two. <laughs> five, five times. Five, just five <laughs> times. I'd say Spider Man Two. Logan, Infinity War, maybe uh, I almost want to say like Guardians of the Galaxy two. I really like, and maybe oh, even like Thor, two. Thor Ragnarok. I'll yeah. give you number one, but not number two. Number oh, two is I like number two better. Green. Oh no way! Mm. Number two is great. Uh, and then, uh, see, then I want to. Th- you know what? Actually, I'd take that off. Not Guardians of the Galaxy. I will do Thor Ragnarok. And then I'll probably do Iron Man one. Yeah, no, I like Iron Man one is solid. I think even now, like the just because because it was so fresh when it came out, and like it's still you still feel that when it when you watch it, like you still feel like there's nothing else really going on but Iron Man. Yeah, well, I think origin stories have the ability to last a lot longer than any sequel or anything like that. Because Especially uh, Wolverine Origins. Ooh. <laughs> um, it's always nice to go back and see like the start and see them weak and to see them learning. Because I think it's yeah. always relatable. I think people always can relate to that idea of being new at something, sucking at it, and trying to figure it out, and hoping to overcome. I'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> you just don't do anything. You're not good at anything. Exactly. That's... I, and I'm not bad at anything. <laughs> well, that's debatable. Um, but I, I do also, you know, I do love Spider-Man 1. I love Spider-Man Homecoming. I Homecoming don't care for Spider-Man 3. Yeah, um, Spider-Man here's 3. a question. Did you see Into the Spider-Verse? I have not. It didn't come out here yet. Uh, it probably oh, won't really? come out here. I have to wait until it comes out on iTunes. I thought that was a fantastic movie. That's what people are saying. They're, people In are fact, putting it best... I, I put away ever. I don't know about best superhero movie, but I will put it on my second best Spider Man movie. Oof. So we go Spider Man two and then into the Spider Verse. Yeah. I think it's better than Spider Man one. I think it's better than any of the amazing Spider Man's, obviously. It's garbage. And then I think it's even better than Homecoming. Yeah. Well it's an interesting it's, concept. The, it's so good. Plus it having was so much better than I thought. Jake Johnson as the voice of Spider Man is Peter Parker, I think. Rachel. Oh, that was, the, and he did great. He yeah. did I, without. I, I won't spoil nothing, obviously, but he he just he plays Peter Parker in in a different uh, 
point in his life than we've ever seen him. Yeah. Well, he, it's, it's just it's perfect. He he's like a good authority without. Um, he's like a good coach. He's got authority without confidence, and I yeah. think that's kind of perfect for Peter Parker. Where he's like, hey, let me teach you how to do this, but I'm kind of unsure about what I'm doing. Yeah. That's kind of his, his vibe he puts off. It was, it was really, it was really good. Yeah. I, um, I was, my kids, going into it, I knew I'd like it. I took, I took Braden to go see it. We went to the theater, but then at the end, I was like, dude, this was way better than I thought it was going to yeah. be. I thought it'd be more fun for him. I probably liked it more than he did. Yeah. Well, I actually, unfortunately, have to wrap this up. Um, my wife is not here. She just had to leave, and I hear my kids screaming at each other. So unless nice. there's anything else about Days of Future Past, I have to end this podcast. <laughs> Sorry. That's all. That's all I got. <laughs> all right, me too. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Sorry for having to cut this short. I'm afraid one of my kids is dying. But uh, we'll Both be for back. Taylor. <laughs> we'll be back in a few days with our next episode.